When I removed the old winches from Black Sheep, it was obvious that the core inside the combing was completely rotten and saturated. To make the repair, I was going to have to remove and in the process pretty much destroy the beautiful teak capping which sat on top of it. The repair itself was quite straightforward. I replaced the old plywood with solid sheets of fiberglass. The fun part of this job was always going to be finding and shaping a new teak capping. When I started, I wasn't entirely sure how I was going to build this, but I figured a good place to start would be with a template. I contacted every teak supplier in the UK before I found a piece of timber wide enough and one that I could afford. Okay, so the depth I need to go down is actually, it's six mil. Yeah, which isn't much, thank goodness. sharpening up the wide route of it for taking out the meat in the middle of this new bit. But I've just got the old bit up because while I've still got the small bit, I can take out the extra, I can take out this edge here. So I should do that now while I've still got lots of wood to support the route. Better too long than too short. There's a camber in the combing that you can see here. The new teak capping is going to have to bend down to meet that. It's good that I used a template to get the shape. This push bit base is going to get in the way of me shaping up a new capping and is going to have to go and be replaced. But before I do anything else, the next job is to finish the repair to the combing itself. As a sailor, whenever I'm doing structural work like this on a boat, I like to think about what forces it's going to be put under. Here you've got the primary winches for black sheep, so this combing could be taking over two tonnes of load. The rest of the deck is a balsa core construction, but they use plywood here because plywood can better withstand those compressive loads. But the big disadvantage of using it as a core material is that water can easily travel along its layers, as we've seen. put some lead on top of the capping so it would follow the camber of the combing. With it settled in this position, I could get a better idea of how the joint at the front and the scarf joint at the back looked. And with my best chisel, I gave them a little trim to make sure they were snug.
The next obvious thing to do was to really make sure that the combing is sitting right up inside the rebate in the capping. And for this, I needed to get a little feeler gauge and go around and just check that it was going all the way up. My tin can feeler gauge also enabled me to find those spots where the combing walls were hitting the rebate and preventing the capping from sitting down properly. And these would have to be quite carefully trimmed back. I decided that I was going to use these lines of the rebate as the reference point for the outboard bullnose and the inboard chamfer. So these were going to have to be spot on. So I spent a long time, as you can see, carefully trimming this, offering it up, testing with a feeler gauge, taking it off, trimming it again. It was one of those rare times when perfect isn't the enemy of good. After spending more than half a tide carefully trimming the rebate, it was finally time to commit and fix this capping to the combing. With the new capping in its final position, I could mark out the line for the inboard end. To do this, I used one of the straight pieces of teak I'd used for spacing out the stern tube. The bull nose on the outboard end was gonna be completely reliant on the rebate. And I noticed that at the front of the bull nose on the old piece, there was a bit of a flare. So I measured this and transferred these dimensions onto the new piece. I used a different piece of teak for the outboard end. It was exactly the same thickness as the overhang of the ball nose. So I could use this and carefully work it around the rebate to get that line. Here I'm using that same piece of teak just as a straight edge on the inboard end to thicken up the lines that I'm gonna be working to. Someone in the yard lent me a compass plane, which I was really keen to use for this project. It's a lovely tool which planes to a set curve. It can either do concave or convex shapes. Unfortunately though, they couldn't find a blade for it. So I was left having to go to probably the most versatile tool there is, the angle grinder. Now this piece of teak cost me 300 pounds, but most of the quotes I'd had for it were in excess of 800. So when I was using the angle grinder on it, I was particularly careful. I used 120 grit paper, but even with 120 grit paper on an angle grinder, I could have made a mistake very easily, and that would have been pretty annoying. Thankfully, it all went to plan. As of any subtractive process like this, it's important not to get greedy and try and take off too much in one go. So as soon as I got as close as I dared to with the angle grinder, I picked up the longboard and did the rest of the shaping with that. The outboard edge of the capping is quite straightforward. Once I've got it down to the line, I can use the router to put in the bull nose. The inboard edge of the capping is angled to match the slope of the combing wall. Once I'm satisfied that I've got the angle on the bevel correct, I always mark this angle down somewhere. I create a benchmark. I can then return to this benchmark with the bevel to make sure that it hasn't slipped. This is a really good habit to get into. The consequences of the bevel slipping and you carry on working to the wrong angle are likely to be very expensive and wasteful as I learned the hard way.
all the shaping done apart from the area around the scarf joint at the back, it was time to get this capping glued down on top of the combing. I roughed up the fiberglass one last time and I gave it a wipe down of acetone. I also gave the teak a little wipe down of acetone just to take out some of the oils in the teak. That allows the polyurethane glue or whatever adhesive you're using to penetrate the wood a little better and that will improve adhesion. There's one last bit of shaping to do around the scarf joint at the back. cuts I made into the new combing was this one, the cut around the cabin top, and I rushed it a bit and as a result there was a small gap which I decided I'd fill with a sliver of teak. It's a shame but at the same time these little mistakes with their honest repairs really make a job feel more human. Pursuing a singular kind of perfection is a strange thing to do in many ways when good enough can take on a patchwork quilt of wonderful variety and forms.